All right, this video is going to go over the top seven errors beginning scripters make when trying to write scripts. Actually, I don't know if there's going to be seven. I have like seven on my list, but three of them are white space related, so maybe it'll only be four if you count white space as a one. But anyway, white space can be a big issue. Why is white space a big issue? Because lots of times, white space doesn't matter. How much space you have doesn't matter. That command worked fine with all that white space in there. You put spaces or tabs, and it works fine. But there are times when white space does matter. And if you have white space when you can't have white space, uh, it doesn't work. And if you need white space and you don't have white space, it won't work. So white space doesn't matter unless it does. The biggest places I see people messing up uh, with white space is when they're trying to assign a value to a, a variable, right? Uh, that did not work, right? When you are assigning a value to a variable, there can be no white space in the assignment. So that's the first place white space messes people up. Next place white space messes people up. Let's see, I have some broken scripts, but they're broken for reasons other than white space right now. But I'm going on the white space, the white space chain. So let's go with the endless loop script. Look at that one, right? When you are having a comparison operator in your script, you need, you need spaces between the square bracket and the uh, thing you're comparison, comparisoning, comparisoning. Yeah. So in this case, by taking those white space out, I now get errors that say, oh, hey, missing, missing whatever you're missing. So if I go back and put those spaces in there, I'll put those spaces back in there and try to run my script. Now my script runs as expected. So white space is important when you are doing the comparisons uh, with the whiles or ifs. Uh, that is critically important for white space there. So those are the, the, the two places white space are most commonly uh, mess uh, students up. Uh, item number two where students mess up, uh, beginner programmers mess up, we screw up with our dollar signs, right? In this case, I don't have a dollar sign there, right? So when I run my code, it's going to run and keep running but it's never gonna do anything because we're not actually we're not actually looking at the variable we're not actually looking at the contents of the variable in this case we're looking at a string called answer so for this to work we would need we would need to have uh, you know this is not equal to y this is never gonna never gonna be true because we're not looking at the variable we're looking at the string answer we need the dollar signs in the comparisons that's a, the second place uh, beginners mess up a lot. Same thing with, with setting variables. Lots of times you'll see people have this in their script. You're right. When we're setting the variable, we don't need the dollar sign. That does, does not work, right? We need user equals rich. Right now we can echo dollar user and it should say rich. So that's the, that's the second things uh, students mess up a lot is when they have uh, improperly used the dollar sign. Um, another place I see students mess up, a, mess up a lot is when we are running a command inside our inside our scripts. Have a pizza. Have pizza.sh. We're running a command inside there. We need backticks to run that command. Backticks. That's the the key over by the one. Lots of times I see students with single quotes. We have single quotes. That's going to set that uh, var variable to the string that we have here, and not the and not the uh, output of the command. So that's another place I see student, student, um, students mess up. They have single quotes where they need back ticks. Um, another place, uh, another thing that causes students a lot of issues is uh, the error messages we get when we run our scripts. This pizza, ship, pizza script has a couple different um, errors in it. Uh, I actually created them when I was writing the script, and, and I read it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to save this script because it has good errors in there. Do you like pizza? Yes. Pizza.sh, 28, unexpected EOF while looking for matching, double quote, syntax error, unexpected in a file. So that's not a very helpful uh, error message. One says line 28 and line 30, so let's go look at line 28 and line 30. If you hit... 28 and hit shift G, it'll take you to line 28. And if I look at this line, 
This line looks fine. This 2930 would be the last line. So it said something about, let's go look at that error message again. It says something about a, a double quote issue. If I look at line 28, uh, I have a double quote there. I have a double, so, so 28 is fine. So the problem is, if we, if we look around, I know where it's at because I just found it again. I have an extra double quote on this line. So the, one of the problems with, with scripting is the way the, the interpreter processes the script, you make an error on line three, it keeps matching things and processing and causes a problem at some entirely different place. I personally had a big problem with this when I first started scripting because I'd be working, as, when I first started scripting, I was working on this giant thousand, multi-thousand line script that ran on all our servers. And I would be working at like line 500 and I would go to like test it and would say error line 1000. So being being the noob that I was, I would skip down to line 1000 and be like, I wasn't even typing down here. How can I possibly have an error at line 1000? It's because that's where the error is actually finally detected. There's probably somewhere else most of the time. So in this case, I got rid of the extra double quote and now I'll run the script again. And it's asked if I like pizza. It says, yes, you like pizza. So now, you know, I found and fixed that error uh, I found and fixed that error, even though uh, the error message wasn't that useful. So uh, that was that was item. I don't know. Was that number three? Did I say number four? I don't know. I've lost track of how many how many issues I've found. I've uh, I've uh, addressed so far. So that was that issue. Next thing we'll look at error number uh, four. We'll call it because I don't remember what number I got to. Your script's doing something, but it's not doing what you want it to do. So it's asking about my favorite topping. I say pepperoni, and it says, oh, that sounds terrible on pizza. It's like, that makes no sense, because one of my choices down here is uh, pepperoni. So it should have matched pepperoni, right? Why is it not working? Well, if we, if we look what the code's doing, I say, you do like pizza. Great, me too. What is your favorite topping? I read that into topping. Then I have my code to change it to lowercase, but I'm not echoing topping. I'm still echoing pizza answer. So that needs to be echoing topping. So even though my code is doing something and it ran without error, it wasn't doing the thing I wanted it to do. And I see this happen a lot. It's a, it's a challenge uh, to solve that sometimes. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fix that. So what I would do, what I would do if I was actually, if I was actually, ugh. If I was actually trying to solve this problem and I didn't already know where, where, where it was, uh, great, with pepperoni. Pepperoni. That sounds terrible on pizza. So what I would do if I was actually solving this problem is right before the comparison, I would put in a little bit of debugging. Echo, dollar topping, LC. And the reasoning behind that is if I'm doing this comparison, expecting a certain value to be in topping LC, and it's not what I expect to be in there, I'll, I, I want to know what is in there. So in this case, I'll, I'll echo out that va value. I already told you what the problem is, but I'll echo out that value. And then, so this should be pepperoni, but we look and it says yes. So it's telling me that my, my value in the, the topping LC is not correct. And if I look, I'll be like, oh, hey, yeah, pizza answer. So that's how I would, that's how I troubleshoot that. So we fix that by putting topping there. Yes, I like pizza, pepperoni. So there we go. So I'm still printing out my debugging uh, pepperoni. So I'm gonna go back in and take my debugging out when I'm done. Sometimes if I'm debugging and I'm not sure I might need it again, I'll comment it out and leave it in place. So if I need it again, I don't have to type all those words again because words are hard. Pepperoni. All right, so that is uh, another thing students mess up, you, you, you put the, the wrong word in the wrong place. Uh, I have another example of that over here in my endless loop script. I actually messed this up when I was uh, testing it too. So this is a script that never ends. It goes on and on my friends. Enter Q to quit or any other input. So I messed it up. I typed Q and it didn't quit. So I was like, that's weird. What's up? So if I go look at the script, it says, if answer not equal Y, do and then read answer but it says enter q to quit well what happened was i was gonna ask if they wanted to quit and make them enter y if they wanted to quit but then i changed my mind as i got a little bit farther in the script and decided no i want them to enter q to quit 
So in this case, I needed it to be looking for Q when I was looking for Y. You know, the script ran without error, but it wasn't doing, it was doing what I told it, but it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So now that I put the Q, it's doing what I want it to do and uh, working as expected. So that was number, issue number four or five of things that students have uh, trouble with. Another issue students have uh, issues with is when you uh, when you create your comparisons, you don't put them in double quotes. So if you end up with with uh, spaces in the input, you get errors. So I went over this in one of the other podcasts, but it's 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 an issue enough that we should revisit it now. So basically, what happens is when I do this comparison, if there's a space in there. It's not protected by by the double quotes. That space messes everything up. It also, if you don't enter anything, the space messes it. It gets messed up. If we if we put those things in double quotes, that fixes it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and fix this one to see that that fixes the issue. So now, actually, I got to fix them all to fix the issue. All the comparisons that use pizza answer. It's just these two. Pete's answer. So when I have my my comparisons, the, the variables in double quotes, if somebody puts a space in something I'm not expecting, it works now. If somebody doesn't put anything, it works now. And if they put the right answer, it still works. So that was another thing. Students mess up a lot. Uh, they don't they don't uh, properly put quotes around their stuff, and that causes causes issues. And then every now and then I see, this isn't very common, but every now and then I see students have an extra read for some reason. I don't know why. We end up with an extra read where we don't need it, or we end up with a read we don't even need. So if we run the run the script and answer the question, do you like pizza? Yes, I like pizza. You like pizza? Great. What is your favorite topping? Pepperoni. The script's like hanging. It's not doing anything. Well, it's actually is doing exactly what you told it. You told it to read, so it's waiting for you to enter input. So if you hit another enter, it keeps running the script. But that's that's like com confusing because it doesn't make sense. You you don't need that extra read there. So lots of times students will have an extra read uh, that's that's messing up the script uh, that they don't need. So if you find that your script's not running to completion when you think it should be, check and make sure you don't have any any extra reads. So I took that read out, and now if I run the script, uh, yes, it's going to go back to running the way it should. So that's that. Another thing uh, students have trouble with is just at this point, a lot of times you guys don't really know what you're doing enough with the commands and such to know what you need to be doing. So if I give you a, a task to do and say, oh, find out if the user is logged in, and you're not sure what command to use for that or how to use it, uh, and that's just something that comes with, with experience. Um, in scripting and solving problems. One last thing, item number seven, since I said there's going to be seven, I think, at the beginning. I don't know if it's seven or not. Uh, sometimes we have issues determining what type of loop to use or if we even need a loop. So uh, for that, if, if you want the code to run more than once for different inputs, you're going to need a loop, either a while loop or a for loop, uh, for the code to run multiple times for each, each of the inputs that you need to process. Uh, sometimes students are supposed to be putting a, a if statement, a, a, while, a loop to, to do something over and over again, and they have an if, so it only runs the one time, and they can't figure out how to make it run more than once. Well, you need a loop. If it needs to run more than once, you need a loop. And that, I believe, is all the common, uh, common issues that I see students have, uh, beginner scripters have when they're trying to write their, their first scripts. So hopefully now I've told you about those issues. If you're having those issues, you can go find them and fix them uh, without my help. But if you need help, just let me know.